A convicted terrorist named Omar Khadr flew on an Air Canada flight to Halifax and nobody seems to know how any of it happened. Well, I have a Transport Canada access to information response today that might explain how somebody like Omar Khadr fell through the screening cracks. Can I have a word? Can I talk to you for a minute? Can we take a selfie together? <laughs> if, you, if you want. Yeah? Can I ask you a couple no, questions? No, can I, how did you get on the plane? I thought you were on the no-fly list. So this is exactly what we figured would happen. Why don't we go ahead and well, walk but, away yeah. from but why don't you, things that are hurtful. Why don't you, but, how, but aren't you on the no-fly list? Come on. This is officer. He's harassing this is a person us. not harassing anybody. Harassing. That's a convicted Al-Qaeda terrorist right there who just flew on an airplane. That's my boss. Rebel commander Ezra Levant confronting convicted war criminal Omar Khadr in the Halifax airport after Ezra realized he had just been on an Air Canada flight from Toronto with one of Al-Qaeda's finest as a convicted and confessed Al-Qaeda terrorist who spent many years in Gitmo. I think it's safe to assume that Omar Khadr is, or at the very least should be, on the no-fly list. I mean, if not Omar Khadr, then who is on that list. How did Cotter, a member of the terrorist organization that flew planes into the World Trade Center, fly on a Canadian airline? How did he fall through the screening cracks? And that's assuming that Cotter fell through the cracks at all, because I could very easily be convinced that Cotter's not on the no-fly list because of a deal he struck with Justin Trudeau when Trudeau gave Cotter $10.5 million and a formal apology for his discomfort from his time spent in Gitmo after Cotter murdered U.S. Army medic Christopher Spear and blinded Green Beret Lane Morris in Afghanistan. Well, I have a Transport Canada Access to Information package sitting on my desk right here that we filed for almost three and a half years ago that might offer some explanations. We were asking for records four years ago, and we are just getting them now. On July 28th, 2016, we asked Transport Canada to provide any documents, including emails, backgrounders, memos, media lines, investigative reports, updates, reports, briefing notes, etc., regarding any security incidents at Ottawa International Airport during the month of January 2016. Four flipping years ago. I'm just getting this thing back now, and it's February 2020, almost March, actually. Anyway, from what I can see here, in just one month, I get why someone like Omar Cotter was allowed to get on an Air Canada flight with impunity. Let's take a look at these documents together. Page 26. On January 17th, 2016, at the Ottawa airport, a security breach occurred when a passenger was able to gain access to the sterile area. What they mean is get past the security checkpoint with a tool over six centimeters in length. A screwdriver, seven centimeters in length. The incident was observed when an airline representative returned to the checkpoint with the screwdriver and advised the screening point manager that a passenger had given her this prior to boarding an Air Canada flight for Halifax. On page two, January 16th, 2016, an entire morning flight to Boston went unscreened and they didn't really figure it out until about three o'clock in the afternoon. Received a call from Sit Ken at approximately 1,500 hours advising of a security incident at the Ottawa International Airport. CATSA advised SITKEN that the first flight of the day search was missed by CATSA. When CATSA arrived at the gate 90 minutes prior to departure, CATSA was advised that the flight had departed earlier in the day, time unknown. CATSA was not advised by the air carrier of the revised departure time, and the required search of the aircraft was not conducted. The flight landed in Boston, and then the TSA there was advised. On January 4th, 2016, we have a first air vehicle that just fails to stop after randomly being selected for screening. It was eventually screened later. On January 23rd, 2016, a snow plowing vehicle also fails to stop after being selected for security screening. 
On New Year's Day 2016, WestJet reported to Transport Canada that a passenger had cleared security with nunchucks and tried to take them on the plane. Page 17, January 26, 2016, three consecutive positive explosive tests were done on a passenger's laptop, suitcase, and purse after the passenger had been randomly selected for further screening. The passenger was allowed to keep their items with them on an Air Canada flight to Calgary, saying that cleaning products probably produced all these false positives. Page 24, January 14th, 2016, I think we see the least shocking security breach in all of this. It's a passenger who is found with one bullet on him at screening. And really, who among us hasn't accidentally left a 22 casing in their pocket? I know I have. But at least the screeners caught it at security, unlike, you know, the nunchucks and the screwdriver. Now, this is just one month in 2016 of security breaches at one Canadian airport. Screeners in Ottawa missed nunchucks and a screwdriver, let a plane fly to Boston completely unscreened and had vehicles just drive away after they were selected for screening. Oh, and then there's that one woman who tested positive for explosives three times and yet had her laptop returned to her because, you know, she assured them that she had just been using cleaning supplies. No big deal. I think Transport Canada has a lot of explaining to do. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. Hey, have you heard the good news? Rebel News is going on an Alaskan cruise, and we would love it if you would come too. We leave July 4th, Independence Day, for Alaska to get all the details, to see the beautiful ship, to check out the itinerary, and to see all the amenities. Please go to rebelnewscruise.com.